Hey everyone! Welcome to 601 Travels, where we tell you the good, the bad, and the points of interest of your favorite cities. We do town tours, highway drives, and lists just like this one. Please be sure to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a future upload. Here's our list of the top 10 reasons you should not move to Waco, Texas. Number 10. Property Taxes Living in Waco is expensive. In fact, if you buy a house there, one thing you'll have to figure in is the cost of the annual taxes for it. The current rate is 46.87 cents per $100 valuation. That'll add up quick the more your house is worth. In recent years, the tax rates have skyrocketed anywhere from 30 to 40 percent depending on what part of the city you're in. This is attributed to the appraisal increases due to the interest of real estate in the city. At this rate, who knows what it'll be in just a few years. Number 9. Heat You won't really know what it's like to experience summer until you've done it in Texas. Most people in Waco don't leave their homes from about March through December. During the summer months, it's not uncommon to get into the triple digits and exceed 100 degrees on a regular basis. You would think a thunderstorm would come in and help cool things down. They don't. They don't make anything better. It's still really freaking hot. Even the winters there are very mild with it highs in the 50s and 60s. Not that there's anything wrong with that, it actually sounds quite pleasant, but damn, those summers are brutal. Make sure whatever you're doing in Waco, you have access to a reliable AC system that blows nice and cold. Number 8. Bad Schools We've mentioned other cities during this series that have bad schools, but Waco is definitely one of the worst we've come across. The schools here aren't just bad, they're really bad. The tests here are a depressing 21% lower than the rest of the country. That means that things aren't working. Only 74% of residents in the city have even completed the 8th grade. Usually, I'd say that homeschool might be a good option, but in this case, I don't see how any other choice could even be considered. Parents are extremely unhappy with the public school system in Waco, and it's obvious that things need to be reformed. Number 7. Traffic Waco in traffic can be next level during tourist season, which is basically all year. Many people choose Waco as their vacation destination and it puts a huge strain on the roadways and infrastructure. There is a few public transportation options for getting around the city, but Waco is definitely a car dependent type of city. There are buses and trolleys that can take you to a lot of different places. There are also major routes that can take you out of town to other places you need to go, like Interstate 35, which connects you to Dallas, San Antonio, and Austin. But like any other highway system in the country, in the morning and evening, there's a lot of congestion. Number 6. Criminals One thing a TV show won't tell you is how very crime-ridden a city is. Waco is very dangerous in a lot of its little pockets. The crime rates here are 74% higher than the national average. To be more specific, violent crimes in Waco are 66% higher than the national average. You'll have a 1 in 25 chance of becoming a statistic while you're there. While Waco is actually 9% safer than other cities of its size, year over year crime has increased by 6%. Always a good idea to check heat maps and try not to get lost and wind up in the wrong neighborhood. Number 5. Tornadoes According to official reports, Waco gets at least two tornadoes per year and has had 121 since 1950. It sits in what is commonly referred to as Tornado Alley. The most notable and destructive tornado happened back on May 11, 1953, when an F5 struck the city and caused over 100 loss of lives. The threat of tornadoes is real and can happen at any time of the year, but it's most present during the winter and spring months. Monitoring the weather, understanding the difference between watches and warnings, and taking precautions can be the difference between life and death. If you've never lived in an area prone to things like tornadoes, this will take some getting used to. 
Make sure to buy a house with a basement or that has an in-ground shelter or above-ground safe room. Number four, roads. Do you have rims on your car that you spend time washing, maybe even polishing? Do you like them? How about tires? Do you value the air or nitrogen that's in your tires? Well, when you're driving around Waco, make sure to keep your eyes far down the road ahead of you. Residents there continually have to deal with bad roads that have huge potholes and other maintenance issues. Driving into some of these potholes can and will cause major damage to your car and wheels unless you have time to avoid them. Some are so bad that you have to literally drive into oncoming traffic to pass by them. Number three, cost of living. If you're a single person and working in Waco, you can expect to bring home around $19,000 per year. That is 33% lower than what you could expect around the country in similar cities. What's really bad and underlines the problem with the income amount is the percentage of residents living in poverty. 27.5% of the city lives in poverty. That's a crazy 82% higher than the national average. What do all these numbers mean? Well, if you're looking to live a decent life without a skilled trade or an OnlyFans, you are going to have a hard time getting by in Waco. You could always get married for the additional income or get a sugar partner to pitch in the difference. Bottom line is that pay there sucks and you are better off being somewhere else to build a life. Number two, expensive houses. So expensive is a relative term. Everything is relative to the economic climate of the city. The average cost of a house worth living in is right around $300,000, which is nothing compared to other cities I know. But considering an individual makes roughly $19,000 per year, this is where the term expensive comes in. Houses in Waco don't actually fly off the shelf and get sold before listing, but they do sell usually at asking within the first two to three weeks. Homes that are priced under market sell even faster, usually within days. Rents aren't exactly cheap either. They go for around 1,000 to 1,300 per month and usually stay occupied. Living outside the city in a suburb will cut these prices down dramatically and is recommended for a number of reasons. Number one, everything Magnolia. One of the main complaints you'll hear from the residents is that a certain TV show has turned Waco into something it's not and never was. The show paints a picture of a quaint, safe, and pleasant town, and that is not the case. The city benefits from the money that's brought in for people coming in to see the stores, houses, and bed and breakfasts, and that's only one of the real benefits. Tourists make the city swell, and it seems everything revolves around a couple little downtown silos. In 2018, almost 1.6 million people visited specifically for that store. That's gone down since the pandemic, but the numbers are still high. If you don't like to share the road with tourists and pay more for basic commodities, consider looking into another city or a different town to visit altogether. Alright everyone, that'll do for today's video. Do you live in or love Waco? Maybe you hate it. While you're still here, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. That makes us really happy. Thank you so much for watching. Bye y'all.